All right, I'm not going to lead you through the gory details on this one, but uh, basically this is a uh, crank sprocket puller for a Cadillac Big Block. Uh, this is patterned after uh, a lot of other gear pullers that you see online. I couldn't really find one for the Cadillac Big Block, but then again, I didn't look all that hard. So what we have here is a quarter inch steel plate. And since we only, ha only have about 3 sixteenths or maybe a little less of clearance between the back of the sprocket and the block, I had to uh, taper this down with the grinding wheel. And, and Well, it took a while to get it just right, to be honest with you. Just basically fitting it on the car, pulling it down, and doing the process over and over. Trial and error fitment, I guess you would say. Uh, also taking into account that the center line of the crankshaft needs to reside right in here and the fact that I should have had these two pieces of metal come down a little farther so I could bolt the or so I could weld the washers uh, to it so I was like well that was a mistake so instead of starting over I just fixed it and I welded these two pieces of metal here I think it probably just made it stronger anyway but uh, so that we could get the center line of these nuts here along with the center line of this which is the center line of the crankshaft, or as close as I could get it, rather. And what you have here is a couple of uh, six inch bolts uh, that screw in here like this. And there are three eighths. And here's the other one. A little hard to get started there. It's, there we go, not perfect. Anyway, we get these seated down there. I've got two nuts welded onto this thing to give myself a lot of gripping power. Now, it's just a gear, right, or a sprocket on a shaft, so it shouldn't be on there with all that much force. Generally, I don't think a, a crankshaft sprocket is on there with all that much force. Certainly not as much as this thing was. That's the balancer pulley um, for the Cadillac. Uh, so now, I, I could have made a pulling mechanism for this in other words another piece of metal with a hole and another uh, nut welded into it to and a pushing screw and I actually did buy the hardware for that but I just you know what it's like no I'm not gonna do that so I've got this I had another puller kit uh, right down there okay but it's these this stuff is too big it just what doesn't work but we can we can utilize this piece out of it so I think you get the point so and then here is the, uh, I guess, pushing screw, you might say. And uh, that'll go in there. And this, this will uh, press against the, uh, the end of the crankshaft, into which I already have the uh, 9 16 bolt that we used to uh, turn the motor over. So I don't think we'll have to worry. With this uh, nice uh, ball bearing tip right here, uh, pressing up against the end of the bolt in the crankshaft, I don't think we'll have to worry about turning the engine and getting it out of time as we uh, pull this crank sprocket off. So, all right, let's put this thing to the test, shall we? All right, time has come. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get this uh, crank sprocket off of this motor. Oopsie. Washers go up here. There we go. That's a little crooked. I'm going to need to screw the bolt out or remove a couple of washers. One or the other. Alright, we uh, just screwed the, uh, the bolt out a little bit. Needed about, needed a smidgen of room there. That's the way it goes with trial and error stuff, especially something you just made in your shop a few, a few hours ago. Let me take one of those washers off. All right, we're going to go with uh, six and a half inches between the base of the tool and the inner portion of the washer. Should give me enough room to fit uh, this piece in here and get it. Straight, yep, 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 yep. Sound like those monsters on Sesame Street. Yep, 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 yep. Bring. I digress. All right, 
I need to get this second bolt at the same depth as the, well, the right one has the same depth as, as the left one. Let's see if we can't eyeball that. Let's see what that says. About the same. It must be square. It must not be off by one micrometer. Does that look, does that look right to you guys? I'm going to say it's close enough for government work. How about that? You can't see it, but we're going to start tightening up the, uh, the center. That looks centered to you guys? Yeah, it looks centered to me too. This shouldn't take a whole lot of force. You know what I'm saying? All right, we got our 17 millimeter here. The end of this uh, press bolt, whatever you want to call it, is like really close to the radiator, like a 16th of an inch. So I got no room for a ratcheting wrench. So I'm going to use a um, opened in wrench. It's already moving. <laughs> Working perfectly. Look at that. And we'll just speed this up in the video. That way it'll look comical. All right, there we go. All right, well, let's pull all that stuff out of there. There's our old sprocket. Remove our tool. All right, don't judge me too harshly. Not only did I need a removal tool, I needed an installation tool as well. So I had some spare pipe laying around, cut a section of five inches, trued it up the best I could on either end with the uh, angle grinder, or flap disc rather. I had took a smaller bit of pipe and welded it up. The welding is horrible because I am completely out of gas for the MIG welder. It is done. So that was welded without any gas and it just went everywhere. So anyway, on Monday I'm going to go get a new bottle of gas. But for now, we're still good to go. So this is the press tool. This is the uh, tool that came with, uh, where is it? It's over here. That new tool that, uh, that we used to remove the uh, crank pulley. Uh, we're going to use this. This will screw into the end of the crankshaft. And then, of course, you hold this with a wrench, and you turn this with another wrench, and that will press on that. And this is long enough to get over the crankshaft down there and give us another inch of travel to get the sprocket onto the engine. I've got to take off the bolt from the end of the crankshaft next without turning the engine. Wish me luck. All right, up next, we're going to have to clean up all of these gasket surfaces in and around the, uh, the timing cover area, all along here, up above the, uh, on the water jackets as well, places like over here and on the block as well. So anyway, I'll save, save you the gory details on all that mess. Let me get this thing cleaned up and uh, we'll get this timing set back in this engine. All right, let's go ahead and get our new sprocket on, on the uh, crankshaft. And of course it's keyed, so it can only go on one way. And we lined everything up uh, in the beginning. If you're uh, curious, the, uh, the little dot always faces to the front so you can see it. And the, on the back side, there's a chamfer. So, can't really screw it up. All right, let's get a press tool and get that sprocket down on the crankshaft. All right, we'll put this exquisitely made tool in action. And I'm uh, going to put the forcing screw up inside. Screw that into the end of the crankshaft, hopefully. I did turn the engine a smidgen uh, counterclockwise when I removed that bolt. I tried my best not to. I uh, put the ratchet on there and tapped it with a hammer. And it moved it a little bit. I was like, hmm, I better stop doing that. So, might as well use all those threads up inside that um, crankshaft. There we go, we're fully engaged now. So 
So then I backed up and cut a piece of steel, and I and I I reinstalled the old well not reinstalled I I put the old sprocket back on the engine just a little ways, and then I put this piece of metal on one of the teeth and put it against the block in there, and then I finished uh, removing the bolt, prevented the engine from turning any further. So once we get the sprocket installed all the way down, and as we install the timing set, we'll tweak this a little bit to make the, uh, the timing marks line up. So let's go ahead and get our uh, forcing sleeve. It's not a forcing screw, it's a forcing sleeve, I suppose. Put that in place and we'll put a wrench back here on the very end and then we'll use another wrench to, to turn this down and they'll force that on and press the sprocket onto the uh, crankshaft. All right, so we've got a 16 on the, uh, the end of the tool here and just got a crescent wrench on the, uh, the business end. And no, these pipes are not square, but this is a low amount of force on this uh, sprocket, so I don't think it'll really matter all that much. All right, we got it bottomed out. Let's uh, pull the tool back off here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and bolt up the uh, crank sprocket without the chain uh, and simply to uh, get my marks aligned again. Uh, what I'll, I'll put the bolt back in the end of the crankshaft and I'll just tweak it clockwise a little bit, make sure the marks line up, and uh, then we'll take the uh, cam sprocket back off, put the chain on, and uh, put the timing set together. All right, we've got the cam sprocket temporarily bolted into place lightly, and uh, I've got the uh, marks lined up again. I had to tweak the uh, crank just a smidgen, and I think we got her uh, dialed in there. All right, so I'm going to get that uh, cam sprocket off of there and uh, see if we can't get this uh, timing set fully installed. All right, so the key to this thing is grab your cam sprocket, put the chain on it, and you're going to slip it over the crankshaft, but don't try to put it on the crank sprocket just yet. Get the cam sprocket past the distributor gear because it's a little wider, right? Now you get past the distributor gear, there's a little smaller recess there on the cam, right? And you let the uh, cam sprocket dangle down a little bit. This gives you a little slack, and then you can lower it and make sure that it's in the right position on the crank sprocket. Now, once you get the chain engaged on the crank sprocket, you lift your cam sprocket back up and slip it over the camshaft so that the bolt holes will line up, hopefully. <laughs> And it looks like they are. Got this top one uh, engaged there. So put a little piece of tape on the end of your nut driver so your screw will, uh, you know, won't fall out if you're in a, uh, you know, a rough uh, position. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna put that other screw in there real quick, and we'll get the car back on the ground. All right, I thought better of it, and I uh, realized that hey, dummy, you need some good bolts. You don't put those original bolts back on that cam sprocket. So I went down to my local family-owned parts house and bought some high-quality grade A uh, bolts. Found them in a bin. He said, "Oh yeah, now go over there. No, 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 down there. Then that's where the high-quality stuff is." You know. <laughs> so okay. Anyway, I looked through the bin. I forget what the brand name was, but it was uh, it was good stuff. So it looked like it'd been there 40 years. So these bolts are probably made in the USA. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go with a little bit of Loctite here, and we'll go with a uh, lock washer as well. All right, there you have it. Uh, the original timing set was aluminum on the cam sprocket and had star washers. The foot-pound torque rating was 18 pounds. 
I'm assuming it was light because it was aluminum and you had star washers and they did the job just fine. However, this is steel and I've got spring washers, so I went a little higher. I went to like 19 or 20 on the foot pounds on that and plus I have a little Loctite on the bolt. So I think we will be good to go. All right, so let me figure out what our next step is. All right, pardon the air conditioner noise, but uh, this is my uh, outdoor mobile workbench, uh, otherwise known as a garbage can. So here we are with the uh, oil pan off the old Cadillac. I just got through washing the inside out with some gasoline to get all the uh, oil out. And uh, what I wanted to concentrate on today was the outside of this thing. Hopefully uh, these parts where the uh, seals were leaking on either end uh, are not too uh, badly rusted. I think I see a hint of blue paint down there. Uh, but this area up here is uh, pretty badly pitted with rust. So right now I'm going to degrease this thing, get a wire wheel after it, and see what the uh, damage is. Hopefully we got no pinhole leaks in this thing. If we start getting after this thing too aggressively, we might end up with some. So let's hope for the best. Degreasing mode, begin. All right, we've taken our oil pan about as far as we can take it. I ran the flap disc on it. I ran the uh, abrasive disc on it. And I ran a wire wheel on it. And a couple of different wire wheels to get down in the grooves and all that kind of stuff. I thought maybe it would fit in my five gallon bucket of evapo rust, but unfortunately, no, it does not. So maybe I'll have to upgrade one day to one of those 55 gallon drums probably about 500 bucks for a 55 gallon drum I don't know maybe we'll cross that uh, path when we get there but, uh, that'll be for another day so in the meantime what we're going to do is go with Pour 15 metal prep uh, which you've seen me use on the uh, Mercedes project where we prepared the bare metal to be painted uh, behind the back glass so right now we're going to go ahead and uh, apply some metal prep this is good for bare metal and rusted metal and you soak this thing down and you let it set you soak it down uh, my, my sprayer quit working anyway so you soak this thing down for about 30 minutes you keep it wet for about half an hour and then you rinse it off with the water and then you paint it all right it's been about 45 minutes and the uh, pour 15 metal prep has been doing its uh, thing and you can see the uh, gray haze there on the uh, the, the bare metal um, I believe we've got a, a decent protective coating on this thing now. Let's go ahead and rinse it off with water, dry it off, and uh, let's go ahead and prime it with some engine enamel primer. All right, I wanted to show you what this thing looks like after you start to dry it off. You see how the, uh, the gray coating is much more prevalent once it's dry. Uh, this is where the Pour 15 metal prep has converted everything. So this is wet. And then this is after it's dry, so you can, I'll put a little water on it so you can see. Anyway, so I just wanted to let you know what it's supposed to look like once it's, once it's dry. Very dull, very gray after everything's been converted to a protective coating. I'm going to finish this up and uh, put a primer coat on. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and prime this thing up and get ready for some Cadillac Blue. All right, let's go with the uh, Bill Hirsch uh, Cadillac Dark Blue 49 to 76. This will be the third brand of Cadillac Blue paint I've tried. The first one you saw in my video a couple of years ago was too, way too blue, and it, it was pretty awful. And then the second round of paint that I got, uh, the first one was off of eBay. The second one I got, I believe I got it from Caddy Daddy. It was the right shade with the wrong sheen. It was kind of a matte or satin. It wasn't gloss. This says it's high gloss, so we're going to find out, folks. Here we go. I've never used this before. Well, it's the right sheen. 
let's do a dust coat and see how well she turns out. All right, well, Bill Hirsch wins the contest of the best Cadillac dark blue engine paint. Nice high gloss finish. Uh, the color is right. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to tell in the video, but uh, maybe once I get it processed and get it online, it'll look, uh, and you know, get it up against the engine, it'll look a lot better. Anyway, so you get the point. But uh, kind of a shame about the uh, rust pitting, but you know what? Not a whole lot we can do about that, but uh, at least we can prevent it from rusting any further. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, folks, I think I'm gonna call this a weekend and we're gonna call it part three of our rear main seal, front crank seal and timing set uh, replacement series on our old Cadillac. Uh, pardon the junky state of this uh, area right over here. I just loaded up with all kinds of Cadillac parts and tools and you name it. Once I get this car back together, this will get cleared out of here. But uh, we got the oil pan all done and we even got the uh, drain plug painted up as well. That's still kind of tacky actually. That Bill Hirsch paint, I think that's going to take that a while to, uh, to cure. So while we were at it, I went ahead and hit the water pump with a coat of the Bill Hirsch paint. I redid the timing cover with the Bill Hirsch paint and I put a coat onto the transmission inspection cover as well, just to make sure that everything matched. Oh, and for today's bonus content, look at this. We've got some scrap metal in the house. My uh, better half did a little scavenging around out in the sticks somewhere and uh, found some old railroad scraps and uh, we can use that to make more tools. How about that? And lastly, we got the timing set installed on the Cadillac and we're all done with that part. Still need to pull my bolt out of the end of the crankshaft there. We're gonna stop with this right now. We're not gonna take this any further. Uh, now that the oil pan is refurbished, we're gonna go ahead and do the rear main seal next but that is going to be in part four of this video series all right folks that's all for this video i appreciate you guys stopping by the channel don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you'd like to be notified whenever i release a new video don't forget to click that little bell down below the video screen you guys have a good one and remember to enjoy driving repairing servicing and restoring your classic cadillac